Nothing ever happens during the daytime. Famous last words for Captain Eric Bingham and first mate Johnny Savage. That's why the two fishermen chose not to put the emergency locator or the life raft in the cockpit of their fishing boat. Hours later, both of them regretted that decision when they ran into the perfect storm of a wave. April 13th, 1998 began as a beautiful spring morning with 27 year old first mate Johnny Savage doing what he loved. He and Captain Eric Bingham were making final preparations to leave Key West for a 350 mile trip to Cancun on a 56 foot sports fishing boat called the Aninga. So that morning we got up and Eric made his, his, his prize breakfast, which was a bagel with a fresh slice of tomato and pepper and um, a little bit of uh, salmon cream cheese spread on it. We had a few of those. And they decided not to put the emergency locator beacon or life raft in the cockpit. We do that, that means we'll just have to clean it when we get there. Nothing ever happens during the daytime. And that was our mindset. Johnny and Eric were about 90 miles into their journey when suddenly... When we looked in front of us, it was, it was like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. It was, it, was, it was like a hole. Again, we were in a two, three foot following sea. And when the Inigo went off this edge and, and went down into this, this rogue wave, you know, the whole boat fell into it. So you said it looked like a scene out of the movie, The Perfect Storm. Yes, it did. Um, that particular part of it did, it going down the face of the wave as we, were, as we were heading down it. So how come you didn't just fly off the boat? We were hanging on. The force of the drop broke the Aninga in two. And to make matters worse, the radios were dead and the lifeboat, life jackets, and locator beacon were somewhere inside the sinking boat. Johnny and Eric were suddenly treading water. We were 90 miles out in the middle of the Gulf Stream and nobody knew where we were. That's when a small white igloo cooler suddenly popped up. We both grabbed the handle and this was, I wanna say this was one of the first miracles. We had never talked about faith or anything like that. I mean, we were just, a, we were just fishermen and um, on a trip. In perfect unison, put handle on the cooler, grabbed each other and immediately, our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we just kept on repeating the Lord's Prayer, repeating the Lord's Prayer. And we knew immediately without, without this distress call, without the EPIRB, we were going to die. When they had finished the Lord's Prayer, a surfboard that Johnny had packed at the last minute floated to the surface. And the surfboard was in the bow. So for that thing to come out of there like that shows how much that boat separated. To get to it, however, Johnny would have to swim through diesel fuel. He prayed. Please, Lord, don't let me throw up. I can't afford to lose this food that's in my stomach. I'm gonna need this energy. After several hours of holding on to just a broken surfboard, some good news. The life jackets floated to the surface. Then, about midday, they spotted a cruise ship on the horizon and sent up some flares, but no luck. When the cruise ship went past us, that was, that was tough. That was really hard because we, we were sure that was gonna be our salvation. As the waves crashed around him, Johnny, who was raised in the church, began to think about his life. I was living a rock star lifestyle, basically. I mean, my, as far as my faith goes, um, you know, I love the Lord, but I was more concerned about going out at night partying. Then Johnny decided to leave Eric and look one more time for the beacon. When he couldn't find it, he lost all hope of being rescued. I got to the point where I had made the decision that drowning would be better than getting ripped apart by sharks. So I had planned my, my death. So I had taken my life jacket off. I was in the process of rolling under. But then something supernatural happened. All of a sudden, the, the greatest feeling of, of warmth and just strength, power, I don't, I don't know really what word to put it, just overcame my whole body. And then I heard, John, you spend a lot of time out here. Pick your line and paddle it. And when I heard that, it came from over there. I mean, Eric is, you know, a mile or so away from it. It's not, and there's, I don't understand how I could hear a voice. I knew it was of God, but I really didn't understand all of it, but I knew that he was with me. So when you heard that voice say, pick a line, what did that mean? So it meant to, you know, to, to find a direction, find a direction and go that way. 
the Holy Spirit in me, I was able to let me see a pattern to go. And I paddled that pat, took that pattern right back to Eric. By now, it's nearly sunset. Eric is suffering from hypothermia and can no longer feel the lower part of his body. That's when another miracle happened. Johnny's backpack appeared. There's wetsuits in the backpack. <laughs> so in this rough, terrible sea state, this backpack floats up to him, the one that needed it the most at the time. But what Johnny and Eric didn't know was that morning a call went out from Cancun to Key West. Don't send any boats. It's getting bad. Stop them all. Because of that storm, the chances of any boats being in their area were almost non-existent. Still, Johnny had faith that they'd be rescued. You couldn't tell me that God wasn't real. Then, Johnny spotted a red tube flare floating about 50 yards away and swam after it. And I tell you, the hope that was in that, I mean, we were so excited. After Johnny reached the flare, he heard Eric screaming and feared the worst. So then I just started swimming to him as hard as I could. And as I got closer to him and close to him, I could hear him screaming. It's a fish boat. It's a fish boat. They quickly lit the flare. My finger was on the trigger, getting ready to pull the trigger. And then all of a sudden I heard, whoa. And I turned around and looked. And there's the 72 foot Viking ditch digger. This huge boat literally just shows up. And you were looking at the little fishing boat. We were looking at the 50-footer, and the 72-footer was right behind us. Never knew it. Turns out the big boat left the dock before they heard about the storm. And then once out there, changed direction and were heading for Cuba to avoid the high seas, putting them perfectly in the path of Johnny and Eric. First time I cried. Um, it was kind of funny, though, because, you know, they stopped and they spun the boat around. And so these boats, we have a big door in the back for bringing in big fish. And we were the big fish they were getting ready to drag in. 24 years later, Johnny has put their story in a new book called Lost in the Stream, the miraculous story of two fishermen lost at sea. Johnny, why are you writing your book now? We're in a time where people need hope. People need to know is no matter how bad things look in front of you that, you know, put your hope in the Lord because it's, it's all part of his plan anyway. Today, Johnny is married to the love of his life, Samantha, and still enjoys boating and fishing. Johnny, why do you think you still get so emotional when you tell this story? I don't deserve to be here. I wasn't living a lifestyle that deserved to, to, to be rescued. And that's, that's probably the heart of me. It's, they're tears, they're grateful tears, and I'm so thankful for what God has done in my life. I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Johnny's story is the story of so many of us. We can be going along with life, thinking things are great, hunky-dory, just humming right along, and then all of a sudden, the perfect storm, a wave tosses us and gets us off kilter, and we're wondering, where's God? What's next? What can I do? God was not only there with him in the midst of the storm, God is able to say, peace be still in the middle of the storm. That's what Jesus did when he was on the boat with his friends, on the boat with his disciples. They were so concerned about the storm and they woke him up saying, aren't you concerned? Aren't you worried? And Jesus uttered the words, peace be still. And he has the ability and he wants to do that in your life. So Ashley and I are going to pray and we're going to ask you to join us. We're going to bow our heads and talk to the Heavenly Father about our needs. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you boldly before your throne and petition you through your son Jesus. And we ask for that person on the other side of the screen who is in the middle of the storm, who's sinking and feeling like they're drowning, that you will reveal yourself through your power as the God who delivers and the God who saves. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we just thank you that you are our great rescuer. You are our lifesaver, literally. Mm -hmm. You are our lifeboat. We just thank you, Lord, that we can cry out to you in our desperation. Even when we're in the pit of despair, we can cry out to you and your ear is inclined towards us. And we thank you, Jesus, that it is by your death, your life, death, and resurrection that we have this relationship with our Creator. Jesus, we thank you and Lord, for anyone who's watching this who just seems to be in a hopeless, seemingly hopeless situation, Lord, Lord, would you just answer their specific prayer? 
Would your love be ever so present and tangible, even right now in this moment while they're watching and listening this, Lord, so that they will know that they are not abandoned, they are not forsaken, but they are seen and loved by their heavenly Father. Lord, I ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, for those who have been watching and saw how they can make a difference in people's lives and who want to give but may not have to give, Father, I just pray that you will show them that you're the God who supplies, that um, if it's in their heart to give, that you'll give them an opportunity to take part, to partner with CBN and help change people's lives, whether it's medical need, clean water, disaster relief, or just sharing the hope and love of Jesus to those across the world, Lord. I just yes. pray that you will reveal uh, yourself as Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, their provider in Jesus name. Yes. And I'm just reminded of the scripture. If any of you lacks wisdom, mm. ask God for it. Ask God for wisdom on what to do with your finances, what to do in whatever situation you are burdened by. The Lord has the answer. Fully rely and trust in him. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. All right, everyone. Well, if you need prayer for anything at all or if you would like to become a CBN partner, don't hesitate. Give us a call right now, 1-800-700-7000. Thank you guys so much for joining with us. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.